I'm going to show you how to make and use a low-cost, no-tech rhythm board. Students love to gather around the teacher's chair to read a good book, and the closeness works again if it's a music rhythm lesson. Of course, it's great when you need no-tech because of internet outages, smart boards not working, and testing times when you need a quieter activity. But the biggest benefit is that it provides a more intimate learning setting and a different learning setting than the presentation format that is the norm today. That intimate learning setting has so many benefits. Proximity allows for a different interaction between the teacher and student or students and students. Eye contact with students is much more direct. Students see other students engaged. There's a sense of community and connection that occurs with everybody right here. Focus and engagement can increase and distractions decrease. Yes, closeness can cause problems as well, and that might be a set of new expect expectations that you have to teach when they're in this kind of a situation. Being close is great for pair share activities as well. Other learning benefits include manipulating items in 3D rather than a one-dimensional drag and drop and clicking that you have on a screen. Adding the teacher to the one-dimensional board adds so much. So here's the one-dimensional board and here I am becoming the part of it that makes it so three-dimensional. Timing is great on PowerPoint, Google Slides, and other presentations, but nothing matches the timing of doing it in person, going with the nuances of what a particular group needs. If a child says, what if we, boom, you're able to do it right here on the board, when if you were projecting, you'd have to go out of presentation mode to maybe be able to create what the student wants to see. As a visual aid, the learning manipulatives are smaller and tactile, which means it comes in handy when you use it for my favorite use of this board as a station in learning centers. So this becomes one of your learning stations and you have maybe what, three or four kids who are using it as part of the center. As a station in learning centers, the specific lesson can be about a song they've been doing in class or totally exploratory and creative. Kids often go to the game teacher-student where they take turns being the teacher and student at the game board. Here's how you make it. You need, from Dollar Tree, rigid foam board, I think this is 20 by 30, four by six index cards, markers, glue, card stock, lamination if you wanna do it in a printer, although you don't have to do that at all. You could just get by, truly, with a foam board and four by six cards. This is cardstock, it's a little heavier than paper. I just had some laying around and I used a, a long strip. I don't know how I had that, but I did. But you could also take, because it's 20 inches, you could take an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock, cut it into one and a half inch strips, and then do two 10 inch strips where you glued it here, here, and here, and here. Um, it would work just as well. So. These are one and a half inch strips, and basically if you use two 10 inch uh, wide strips, you'd glue it, and the instructions will be down in the description. You'd glue down here, across here, and up here. Then on the other strip, down, bottom, and up. Then you put a little drop of glue between these beats so the cards stay in place. And it, this board has been knocked around all over the place and it has lasted forever. And these cards just slip right in there. They're awesome. Now I did eventually laminate the cards and so they slip in very easily because of the lamination. But for a long time I had just plain cards. I didn't even laminate them. Now you can see that I drew these myself. I am no artist. And my favorite saying is to the kids, this is why I'm not your art teacher. But uh, I think this, me hand drawing them worked really well, but you could also print them, which gets me to another uh, benefit. You can use classic notation or you can use icons. So if you wanted to do the song Bell Horses, for example, you could do one horse and two horses for your one sound and your two sounds and glue that on. You could uh, get notation, print it, glue it on the four by six cards. You can do that and then throw it through a laminating machine. You can do that as well or not. Just glue it on, it works fine too. So I use these some, but I use this the most. So here's how I would use it. I had envelopes 
and I just had the four by six cards in the envelopes. I had quarter note, half note, sixteenth notes, whole note, quarter rest, and two eighth notes. And for the half note, you know, instead of a single one, I did this crazy thing where I took one card and then another card so that it showed it going across the two beats like that. And it worked really great. I used it mainly with kindergarten first and second. And so I kept mainly to quarters, barred eighths, quarter rests, and sometimes four sixteenths. I used it some for half notes though too. All right, so here's my lesson. I would start with 16 beats and we would pat our legs to the beat as I touch each note. Uh, so we go, bell horses, bell horses, what's the time of day? One o'clock, two o'clock, time to away. And I might have a student come up and do the tapping and everybody else is singing and patting their legs. Then we would figure out the rhythm to, and I'd have them clap it where we would clap the rhythm. And I would say, now we're gonna go back to the beats and figure out which beats have one sound, which have two, and which have no sound. So bell, and we would talk about whether that was one or two or none. Horses, oh, okay, here we go. And they would figure out where the ones, twos, and the nuns came in. And so then I would leave that where it was, and I would just add this on top of it. And when we got to bell horses, bell horses. I would add that there. What's the time of day? And then we would figure out that that was a rest. And depending on where you are in that process, whether you want it to look like that, or if you were using icons, maybe you just want it to be a blank. You can do that however you do it and with whatever system you're using to teach rhythm. Once we had it all done, we would go back and as I tapped it, they would sing the words. Then we would go back and we would sing it with our rhythm syllables. This is such a worthy project. It costs almost no money and the benefits are huge. The instructions will be in the description below. Hope you get a chance to make this great no-tech, low-cost rhythm board.